Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome, or perhaps welcome back, to my channel. Today's video is part of my monthly Sheetload Rewind series. I will be rewinding it back to a past sheetload of cards. Sometimes this is to breathe new life into it and maybe make an alternative. Other times it's just to remind you about it or perhaps reintroduce you to that edition if you're newer to my channel. If you do enjoy videos like this where I revisit past sheetload of cards, make sure to check out the Sheetload Rewind playlist which I have linked in that description box below. Today we're going to be rewinding back to April of 2021. This printable shows you how to create 10 cards using two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper and 10 pieces of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Now that sounds like a lot of cardstock, but this is a mini slimline edition, so you can't get two card bases out of each cardstock, but you'll see later that I do show you how to cut the card base and the sentiment piece and matting from a single piece of cardstock. In fact, I'll show you kind of an, a different way you can use your leftover cardstock today as I get into the process. Another way that I'm switching it up a little bit is I'll be showing you how you can use 6x6 six six paper if you switch up the cutting guides just a little bit. Now at the end of this video, if you haven't downloaded this edition yet and you want to, I'll tell you where you can find that link. As long as you're a subscriber to my channel, it is free for you. As I get into the process, I will tell you about the products and tools that I'm going to be using today. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For my pattern papers today, I pre-chose four pieces from Simple Stories Vintage Bliss 6x6. I have a feeling that this paper pad is no longer available, but always feel free to use what you have in your stash. The pieces I chose, the first two, I thought the front and backs went very well together. So I'll be cutting these one way and then flipping over some of the pieces for each of the cards. The final two patterns I picked out, I really didn't think the backs would go well with the fronts, but I thought these two pieces would work well together. So I will be using the fronts to make two cards. All together at the end of this video, I will yield six mini slimline cards. Hey crafty friends, it is Editing Alicia here with just a heads up that I did not make six cards today. My math wasn't mathing, so make sure to stick around to find out how many I was able to make. I'm going to get started by cutting my pattern papers, but again, because I'm not using 12 by 12, I will be using the single card dimensions given on page one of the printable. There will be one slight change and that is for the vertical piece. It will only be three inches tall, so I will be adjusting that and the mat behind it. If your pattern paper has a direction, make sure to keep that in mind for your first cut. On this first piece, I do want my wood grain to go a specific way, so I did rotate it 90 degrees before making the first cut, which is just straight in half at 6 inches by 3 inches. Now I'm going to take one of those and cut a piece off that is 1 and a half inches, and this will end up being PPB, the vertical strip on the card. Because I have to cut the background in two pieces, this will cover up the opening between them. Now I'm going to take the remaining portion and cut it so we can spread it across the card front for an even border. For this, I cut it at 3 and 1 8 inches wide. 1 8 is the mark that is halfway between the 3 and 3 and a quarter. And now you can see when I flip over the middle piece, the vertical strip, this will fill a mini slimline card front. I do want to keep these together so I know later which piece goes on which card. I make the same cuts on the second half, but this time I will have the plaid pattern fill more of the background, so I flipped it to that side when cutting. 
The next two pattern papers are the ones that I'm only using the front side of, and these get cut in the same exact way, but I won't be flipping these over to create the card kits. Instead, I cut the six pieces that I need from each sheet, and then I mix and match the patterns for the final cards. And once again, I make sure to keep the pieces together, so later it's easier to know what goes with what. For the final piece of pattern paper, it's going to be like the first one where I flip it over to the back side to get the different patterns. Now I'll show you how to cut the card stocks that will be your card bases, your matting, and your sentiment piece. Now even though I just held up six fingers, like I mentioned before, my math was not mathing. Go ahead and get yourself out eight sheets of cardstock if you're following along. I'm going to get started by cutting a piece of the cardstock that is six and a half inches by six and a quarter inches. Because my six and a half measurement is cut off on my trimmer, I did use a four and a half inch mark, and then I turned it and I cut two and a quarter inches off the eight and a half inch side. I'm going to keep the scraps from this off to the right, and later I'll show you how to cut these down for your mat and your sentiment. For now though, I'm just going to keep cutting each of my pieces of cardstock into the card base size. For my cardstock today, I'm using Gina K Designs Soft Stone cardstock. I thought this color went well with all of my pattern papers. You could go ahead and fold your card bases in half, but I'll be using my scoring tool, so I'm going to set these to the side for now. Now I'm going to show you how I cut my sentiment piece, and instead of just cutting one from each of the original pieces of cardstock, I'm going to cut a few from this large scrap. To do that, I get started by cutting these into columns that are three and a half inches wide. Then those pieces get rotated and cut to one and a quarter inches tall. You'll just want to keep cutting and using those scraps until you have eight total pieces. But again, if you use a different amount of pattern paper, you might need to cut to yield a different amount of these pieces. Eventually, we will be cutting an angle on the left, but for now, let's go ahead and move on to the mat for pattern paper piece B. Since I adjusted the size of pattern paper B, I'm also going to have to adjust the size of CSB or the mat for it. Instead of cutting it at three and a quarter inches tall, we're just going to cut it at three inches tall. Like the sentiment piece, I'm going to start with a large scrap of the gray cardstock, but this time I will be cutting it into columns that are three inches wide and then rotating and cutting into sections that are one and three quarters inches. I just kept cutting and using the larger scraps until I had eight total pieces, actually six for now, but you know, we'll fix that later. And then once these were all done, I was left with some pretty good sized scraps that I'll put with the rest of my cardstock so I can use it on future projects. To help with the nice crisp fold for my card bases, I did bring in my score buddy. Now because this cardstock looks almost like a square, you're going to want to make sure that you're scoring on the right edge. You'll notice here one is at six and a half inches and the other is six and a quarter. You'll want to make sure that you have your six and a half inch along that ruler so that when you score it at three and a quarter, it gets scored in half. I usually do a few swipes with my bone folder and then I fold it and I reinforce that fold with the tool. I continued scoring and folding all of my card bases in this same way. The main parts are now ready so we can start assembling the cards. The first thing I'm going to do is put the pattern paper piece bees onto their gray mats. For this, I add adhesive to the back, and then the top and bottom should align. But sometimes this is hard to do by hand. So I'm going to bring in a helper, and for me, that is my score buddy. I'm going to remove that because I didn't press too hard, and with my ATG, I can do that. And now I'm going to use the ledge on the score buddy so I can line up the cardstock and the pattern paper just right. Now if you don't have a score buddy, you can definitely use a paper trimmer or a misty, anything that has a little lip. 
This is simple to do. You can just push both of the pieces right against the ledge and then move the pattern paper left to right to get nice even borders. It was at this point where I realized I did not do my math correctly that I actually had enough to make eight cards instead of six. So off camera, I made myself two more card bases and two of each of the smaller gray pieces. Now it's time to get these put together. I'm gonna grab one little trio of pattern papers, the ones that go onto a single card, and I'm gonna start by putting the square piece over on the left. I try to get a nice even border around the outside edges, and then I'm gonna take the piece with that same pattern and put it over on the right, once again, trying to get nice even borders. Now we'll take the matted pattern paper piece B and cover up the opening between the two. Now you could definitely pop this piece up if you wanted for some more dimension, but for now I'm going to leave this piece flat. I know I just said that the square piece of pattern paper goes on the left, but just like the card base, it's not quite a square. So make sure before you press the piece down too hard that you do have it oriented in the right way so that there's an even border all the way around. I continued adding all of the pattern papers to the card bases until all eight were completed. While I work on putting those together, I thought I would stop by with a little crafty question. I would love to know, what is your favorite non-A2 size card to make? Perhaps it's mini slimlines like I'm making today. Let me know in that comment section below and make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag crafty question. Here's a look at all of the card fronts put together. I did realize while I was assembling them that one of the pieces, the pattern paper piece B, I cut too wide, but you know what? I made it work. I just cut a larger mat, and as long as you don't give these all at the same time, nobody will ever know. Make it work. Now it's time to get the front decorated, and I'm gonna start by showing you how I cut the angle on my sentiment piece. I cut a single one. Now it's not gonna look exactly like the printable, but that's okay. And then I place two more behind it, and I use that same angle and scissors to continue cutting until all eight had that angle. You could do a different angle. You could do rounded corners. That is up to you. Once all of the angles were cut, it was time to stamp onto them. For my sentiment, I'm using the Abstract Botanical stamp set that I designed with Not Too Shabby a couple years ago, and I'm choosing You've Been On My Mind. I thought that this could be used for a few different occasions. I'm going to be stamping that with blue raspberry ink because I thought it went well with some of the blues in the pattern paper. Now I'm going to set up the sentiment, and I want to put it a little bit to the left of center because later I'm going to embellish the right side just a bit. Once I have it set up, I'm going to ink it with the blue raspberry and see what it looks like, and I really like the way this first one looked. So now that it's set up on the misty, all I have to do is put in the next piece of cardstock, stamp the sentiment, put in the next piece of cardstock, and so on until all eight are finished. To add some sparkle to each card, I'm going to be using Elizabeth Craft Designs Transparent Silver Glitter Dots. Now, good news, these are one of my favorite embellishments to use. Sad news, they're no longer being sold. What I love about these is they add a little sparkle, they're nice and flat for mailing, and they were super economical. If you do know of a company who makes these, please let me know down in that comment section below. For my sentiments today, I'm going to use not quite the largest, but the second from largest, and I put a trio over on the right side. Now I can adjust these a little bit to get them as straight as possible, but it's a craft. It doesn't have to be perfect. I continued adding some sparkle to each of the cards, and while I use the same size for all three, you could definitely switch it up like if you're using gems or something else by maybe doing a big one in the middle and smaller one on the sides, or you could do five teeny tiny ones. Make it yours, use what you have in stock or on hand, I guess. And now I've thought of another crafty question. What is your favorite embellishment to add to a card? 
let me know down below and don't forget that hashtag. Now I do want to give the card a little bit of dimension and to do this off camera I added a couple foam tape strips to the back of each one. Now here's a spot where you could definitely make these your own by moving the sentiment up or down on the card however you like. I'm going to go pretty much like the sketch shows. After I pulled the release paper from the tape, I'm going to align the right side of the sentiment piece with the very right edge of the cardstock mat. Again, you could adjust this left to right or totally switch it up. Sheet load is always a great jumping off point for you to make the card your own. I finished completing the eight cards and here's a close up look at the finished set. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together and switched up this set of cards using the April 2021 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the free printable. If you would like to make some of your own mini slimline cards using the April 2021 sheet load of cards printable, as always, I do ask that you're a subscriber to my channel before you click on the download link, which I'll tell you where it's at here in just a minute. I don't make you send me any proof. Please, we just go on the honor system here. Being a subscriber is free, quick, and easy. Just click on that red button below this video if you haven't already. You are gonna find the link to the April 2021 printable down in the description box right above my related products list. Now below the link, it will say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is your password. I hope that you have fun getting crafty with this printable. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.